Um, my name's Cindy and I'm going to be talking today about how anyone can get constructive user feedback. I'm the head of user experience at Nocrat. I'm also a life coach that works with women who are struggling with self-doubt and anxiety in the workplace. So I'd like to bring a bit of both of those things to talk today. Love to connect with you if you want to find me on LinkedIn or other social so like I mentioned, I work for Technocrat. Um, I've worked on and off for about five, five plus years. And our philosophy at Technocrat is like your work, love your life. And that's definitely something that I can get on board with and I love about Technocrat. So let's get into it. So why is it important for us to be here and why is it important to get constructive user feedback? Um, we all want to be doing good work and be putting good products and services out into the industry for customers, clients and people to experience. And if we don't get feedback and input from the people that are going to be consuming those products and services at the end, how do we know that we're doing good? So today is about really getting all of you on board with being a bit more enthusiastic and uh, finding it a bit more approachable to get constructive user feedback, the people that are going to be using your services. And do not think that it's necessarily just the user researchers or the UX designers role to be doing that. Um, there definitely is an opportunity for everyone to get on board. And even if you're joining a session, if there's opportunities, definitely put your hand up because it's amazing what you can think about what people want. And then when you actually hear them say it, it starts uh, becoming like quite a different viewpoint that you can get, which can be very grounding and humbling. So probably one of the biggest things is to not be scared about it. I've uh, worked on project before where before we even got started, it was my early days of UX design. I was super enthusiastic. I'm like, yeah, we're going to go and test this. We've got people in the lobby downstairs. We can just catch the lift down there and get feedback straight away. Client was so scared it was canned before we even got a chance. Um, so some of that can be about bringing clients along on the journey that it's, it's not actually scary. Um, and you're there to learn. So I'll dive into that a little bit more. So not like this little guy, you don't need to be scared about it. And the first thing is it's not actually about you or the product itself and the, all the effort and energy that you've put into it. In, if you're getting feedback on your product or service, it's really about putting yourself in that person's shoes and being present and listening to them and their feedback. So you can really take the pressure off yourself. No feedback is worse. So if you spend, or even with clients, if everyone's enthusiastically charging to the finish line, wanting to get a product or service delivered, and you haven't had feedback input from the people that are going to be consuming or using the product, what's the point in sprint sprinting in that direction if you don't know how it's going to land or resonate with the people using the product? And very big one as well, you might think that you need to have the answers. So if you're getting some feedback from someone that's going to be using the product and they're asking you a whole bunch of questions, what's going to happen with this? What's behind that button? What's your plans for this? And it might be really early days and you just don't know. It's not actually about you needing to know the answers. So we'll cover that a little bit later on. And you're here to learn. You're not there to get a pat on the back. So that might be one to bring clients along on the journey with as well, because they might be thinking that a feedback session is really about seeing, oh, do they like it? It's not really about that. It's about helping to redirect that perspective that you're actually there to learn and you want to see all the problems and understand the issues with the product or service that you're creating to make sure that by the time it goes to market, whether that's a product or a feature, that you've actually called out a lot of those problems and issues. 
And the person giving feedback is most likely nervous too. So if it's your first time facilitating a session like that or just really informally getting feedback, they're probably going to be nervous themselves. And I'll talk a little bit more about um, really being able to put yourself in their, their shoes and not feeling like you need to be nervous um, because they're, they're going to be feeling those vibes too. So at the start of the session, it's really important to outline what's going to happen. So make it super clear, have, have some time beforehand if you're wanting to get feedback on your product to think about what you're doing, why you're wanting to get feedback, what type of feedback you're wanting to get, why is that important? And the more clear that you can make it for anyone that you're wanting to get feedback from, the less nervous they're going to be, and you too. What I like to do with various Research sessions is create an information sheet. So if you take some time beforehand to think of those things like who's involved, why are you doing this, how long is it going to take, what, do, what does the person need to do that's taking part and when is it, then that makes it really easy to go and share that and for people to be clear on what's going to happen. If you're going to be recording, um, make sure you get consent Anyone taking part should be crystal clear on what it means uh, to take part and what will happen in their data. And if you have that capability as well, it's great to get that feedback from a consent form from your legal rep. And on a side note, you can make it even easier for yourself if you use a research recruitment platform. So one of the big challenges with getting feedback on a product or service is actually getting in touch with those people that would be fitting your persona group or who would be using the product or service. Um, we use Askable a fair bit. Crap. So observers. So I highly encourage uh, clients to come along and join the session. It's great to have your clients on your team come and observe what, uh, what feedback they're getting on the product or service. Um, we've had a project recently where some of the client team were involved and included and they became real advocates for getting feedback from, from the people using their, their website um, and were then able to champion that further up the chain from just our involvement. But we can get a little bit enthusiastic. So if you haven't facilitated a research session before or even just generally got feedback on your product or service, less is probably more because the more people you add into the room, you probably make yourself a bit more nervous as well. There's more eyes on you. So I keep it to three observers. The person taking part, the participant, will feel as well a lot of eyes on them. So the more uh, informal you can make it, the more relax the setting, the less people, probably the more insight you'll get as well. So it really is a balancing act between wanting to make sure that your client and developers and designers can all get a sense of that feedback firsthand. Um, but yeah, balancing it up with not adding too much pressure to yourself or the person giving feedback. Bringing your client team along, like I mentioned, other members of the team. So if you ever get the opportunity, definitely come along. It's great to have that perspective. Um, and if you are doing it remotely, make sure you get everyone to test the link out beforehand. Guys smiling at me. Um, because you'll find that often everyone tries out the link five minutes before the session and you're just about to get started and they're like, it's not working. So you don't want that to be happening right when you're ready to go with your first session. And particularly if you're getting clients involved in the session as well, and this, I've been to a talk where this was the whole talk on getting clients involved in research sessions, just let them know what's expected of them beforehand. So definitely want to encourage them to join the session, but let them know when, when is it okay for a client to ask questions in the session, 
how are they meant to introduce themselves. If they're going to be taking notes, just making sure that they're de-anonymised. So on that note, note taking and recording. So there's a lot of um, different tools these days that can do auto transcribing. So it's great to make the most of those tools and um, just being mindful of where the data is being stored. Um, write some dot points directly after the session. So if you've gone along enthusiastically, you're getting all this great feedback, your mind's so full of all these exciting things to do. If you then park it and get straight back to some other work, guaranteed you'll have lost a little bit of that. So while it's fresh in your mind, um, definitely jot some dot points down. There's use an auto transcribe tool if it's available. So just before you start the session, prepare yourself and your observers. So like I mentioned before, prepping your clients or anyone else that's going to be joining the session, just know how, let them know how it's going to run. If it's your first time, you might want it to just be you and see how it goes and learn from that experience. I would block about 30 minutes beforehand. This could be an in-person session or a virtual session. You might find that other meetings run over and you really don't want to be running late if you're getting feedback from someone that's made the time to give their feedback. So allow 30 minutes beforehand just in case you have other meetings that run over. Have your recording ready to go, any notes and questions. You want to come across as prepared as possible and if you're trying to find your questions, trying to open up your notes, um, that might make you more nervous as well and then the person, the participant will feel that too. Show your notifications are silence. There's nothing quite like a dinging every few minutes to uh, really irritate someone. Arrive five minutes beforehand so you can be all prepared and ready to go. So then getting the session started. Make sure you have a clear introduction. So I would generally introduce, introduce myself first, talk about why we're here. And then I invite everyone who's observing the session to put their cameras on, put their mic on, say a quick hi, introduce themselves, and then turn the camera off. And that's in a, in a physical session, if someone's coming into the room, maybe they introduce themselves at the start and then they can be somewhat off to the side. Um, there are, back in the days of early user research, where you'd have a, a one-way mirror and you have a lot of people hiding behind there, um, people can tell. So uh, I found even the difference between a physical session where people come into an office environment compared to a remote session where they're uh, dialing in from their home. I found the remote ones, people are a lot more comfortable. They're in their own space. They haven't had to hike somewhere and come into this space that they're not familiar with. All of those things just make people a little bit more closed off. So you just have then a little bit more work to do to make someone relax. Talk about your project, what you're doing, what the intention is, what you're trying to achieve out of the session, the purpose of why they're there, the length and format. So you're basically just rehashing the things that you've thought about early on on your information sheet, just making sure that's super clear. And not everyone reads it, so it's good to just reiterate that. And make sure that they're really clear that you're just getting feedback and you're not testing them and their abilities. A lot of people can think, particularly if it's called a user testing session, don't, don't know where that came from initially. It's like industry terminology. But for someone taking part in that, when they see the word test, like we all feel it like a little bit of a contraction, like I'm being examined and my abilities are being tested. So, I prefer to call them feedback sessions and um, I make sure it's really clear and I reiterate it quite a few times that we're not 
testing them and their abilities. We're keen for super critical feedback. Um, and that's on my last point, making it really apparent that you're there for open and honest feedback. So back to my earlier slide where I was talking about we're there to learn, not get a pat on the back. That has to come across really intentionally um, that you are genuinely open to getting feedback and you're ready to hear critique and uh, criticism of whatever you might have been involved with. And check if they have any questions. A lot of the time or most of the time people don't have questions as long as it's been all outlined clearly for them beforehand. So then building rapport, so um, really timely this talk, given Julia's talk earlier, I uh, were talking about active listening and also about breaking the ice. So building rapport, it's good to start with easy conversational questions. So rather than just jumping in, like jumping in with a meeting and getting straight into the details, you can start with some easy conversational questions. So and that can be relevant to whatever the, the area is that you're getting feedback on. So if it was an educational product, perhaps it's asking them about their role as a teacher and how's it all going for them. Help them to relax, keep it informal and conversational. Uh, but not down the super end of informal, like you don't really care. It's a balance, you, you want to have a nice conversation. Be present, so that's, that's a big one. People can tell if, if your mind has wandered to what's for lunch in 45 minutes. Um, the more present you can be, that someone really can see that you're listening, the more that they'll share and the more that they'll open up. If you're thinking about what you've got planned for the weekend and your mind's gone there, just rein that back in and come back to, back to the present of the session. And make them feel like they're the expert. And they genuinely are. They're the expert in their own lives. They're the expert in their own opinion. And you want them to feel like that because they'll feel more encouraged about sharing honestly and not feel like they're being tested, which will make them contract and not share as much. So what can we ask and what should we avoid if we're getting feedback on our product or service? So again, focus on the person first and then the product second. Um, get them to share what goal are they wanting to achieve? Why is this important to them? So you might, let's just say educational product, might be keen to know if this new feature that you've designed is that is that like what could be improved with that particular feature that teacher might not care about that feature at all but they care about being able to help their students learn and grow so they're the sorts of things that focusing on the person first when you get an understanding of their underlying motivations um, that that will help you to get deeper insights when it does come down to putting that product in front of them, feedback. You can ask why as well. People make a lot of sweeping statements and uh, you find, might find that you do this yourself. I don't like the color red. You could just accept that that person doesn't like the color red, but that doesn't really help you do much with that information. You can ask them, oh, so why don't you like the color red? Oh, I find it, it triggers me in this way and that. And you can keep asking why and why and why and get a lot of really deep insights that then are a lot more easy to work with and understand. You can see as well if that's a trend as well. Asking open questions, so starting with a what, where and how um, is really helpful to really invite someone to share as much as possible. You can ask them to elaborate or tell me a bit more about that. And what do we avoid? Like I mentioned at the start, we're not there to get a pat on the back. If they do happen to 
really be encouraging and saying they love the product or the service, the feature, whatever it is that's been designed, definitely welcome that in. Um, but be humble about it because it's, it's not really what you're there for, but it's always nice to hear, of course. Try and avoid leading questions. When we plant in words like like or love, we are actually leading someone in their answer. So you might find that these slip in anyway. If it does happen to slip in, just roll with it. Um, and the more that you practice facilitating a session like this or even just asking your mates, what do, what do you feel about this product? Uh, the, the better you'll get at noticing when you are dropping in a leading question. I generally go with feel. How do you feel about this? bit more on the neutral ground. And avoiding closed questions. Do you think this is the right approach? So when we have closed questions, we're just going to get a yes or no answer. And it really depends. You might find you have some people who are super chatty and will just run with that and they'll say yes or no and keep, keep talking. And then you'll have other people that might be a little bit more hard work and then you have to work even harder to get something beyond the yes or no with a closed So how do we respond? Not like this. Not like gaping mouth open to whatever someone might be sharing. And you can, it's amazing what you can cover. You might be thinking of getting in there just to get some feedback on a feature, but somehow that triggers some sort of conversation and you might find that someone ends up sharing quite a lot. So again, be neutral, not here to debate. So similar to the icebreakers earlier, we're not here to get into a big controversial conversation. You might find that someone starts talking about something political. So you're just there to thank them, accept them for their opinion um, and keep directing them on. Show empathy as well if someone might be sharing about something a bit deeper, providing a story, it's great to get insight into those stories that they might be sharing. Do active listening as well, like Julia was talking about. So um, that's basically just reflecting back what someone's shared to show you that you've heard it. So if someone has said that they found a button distracting, oh, really don't like that button, it's distracting me and I think, I think it's really out of place. A, an active listening example would be, oh, okay, so you've said that that button's um, distracting. Can you share a little bit more about that? Or is that correct? You can validate, get them to validate and you'll find that because you've reflected something back, it shows you're listening and then they'll share even more. And curious listening, so I'm curious about what you shared. Can you tell me a bit more? And get comfy with silence. Don't feel like you have to jump in and say lots of things. Um, someone might just be thinking about what their answer is, or if you just sit with the silence, that can allow them, give them space to share a bit more. And Back to the very beginning when I was talking about not having to have the answers to all the questions. With, if someone's asking you a question of what's behind that button, what's going to be in that menu option, you don't need to know. <laughs> you can redirect the question back to them. What do you think should be behind that button? What would you like to see there? What, what is important for you in that, that page or that menu option? So I do this quite a lot in sessions and you'll find that majority of the time that they've already got an idea of what they want in their heads. They were just asking you to see if it lined up with what they were thinking. So wrapping up a session, make sure you give them a genuine thank you for their time. Let them know how helpful they've been. People can have nerves because they think they're they might have given you a lot of critique and uh, you definitely need to let them know that that's been well received and they've been really helpful in being really upfront and honest with their critique. Let them know what's going to happen next with what they've shared 
and give them a space for any last questions or comments. Um, sometimes when a session's starting to wind down and someone is super relaxed, they can feel like, oh, the biggest part is done. They might share some really good insights, some nuggets right at the end. So don't, don't switch off just because the formalities are ending. Once you've got all the insights, that can equal a lot of words on pages. Um, and I won't dive into this too deeply, but I thought it's a really important part. What I do is set up a, a spreadsheet. In the early days of UX design, I was writing all of this on post-it notes, putting it up on the wall. I'd have a really sore hand from doing all of that, and then I'd still have to put it in my computer anyway. These days, I just set up a spreadsheet, basically have the person's role, the quote. I don't, don't go through it in any great detail. I just put chunks of quotes with various different things in it. Give it a theme. Um, try and use the same keywords so you can filter against it and write any comments that you have. So that's a really great way of then being able to apply those filters, see if there's themes amongst the different people that are giving their feedback. And then it's really easy to then translate that into um, a presentation or sharing that feedback with the wider team. And Definitely keep it simple when you're sharing your findings. Not everyone gets as excited about spreadsheets, great filtering options. So keep it simple when you're sharing your findings with your clients and your teams, but use as many quotes as you can because that firsthand sharing is, yeah, where all the gold is. So this is what we've explored today. So don't be scared, get out there, get feedback. The more the better. Outline what's going to happen, be really upfront. Be mindful of who you want to invite and how to prep them. Be prepared with your note taking and recording. Make sure you've got a clear introduction. Keep it relaxed and conversational. Build rapport and be present. Be mindful of what questions you want to ask and avoid, but don't get too bogged down if you find you ask the wrong type of question. Just guide it gently back and you'll learn the next time. Be aware of how you can respond and don't feel like you have to have the answers. You can, you're there to find out what they think the answers are. Wrap up the session and make sure that uh, the person knows that they're feedback has been really helpful to you and the product and service. And synthesize your findings. And the more that you can do this as you're going along, the less of a big scary job it will be at the end and the more that you can do with it and share with the team. Thanks everyone. I think we've got, yep. Okay, so your question was about a client that might have been burnt before in getting feedback. How do you bring them on board with the process? I'd spend a little bit of time with them to unpack what their concerns are. Why is that? What happened? Um, so that you can have the learnings from that and then use that to bake into whatever you want to put forward for them. Keep it small and simple. Sometimes coming along on a uh, making it more approachable. So maybe they're not up for doing first-hand research interviews or feedback sessions, but maybe they'd be up for a survey or maybe there's a hot job poll that they could do on their website, like keeping it small so that they can see that, oh, that small investment, that was then a positive experience. And then you can keep building the, building the relationship, building their trust, and then take it a little bit further each. It can be a mixed bag. Um, you can definitely tell with some people and it, you, you never quite know who you're going to get until you're actually in the session. So all you can do is make the person feel as comfortable as possible and that their critical feedback is genuinely welcome. Um, how, how they respond to that is really up to them. Um, so. Not, not a great deal that you can do beyond 
what I've just shared and um, make them feel like your their feelings aren't going like they're not going to hurt your feelings in doing it and by them understanding that also that now's the time for giving that critical feedback uh, because down the track is when it's going to be a whole lot more work so this is the space and time and that it genuinely is welcome and they'll feel that too based on how you're responding to what critique they're sharing if they share something like oh I really hate that or that thing's really ugly and and you encourage that then they'll start to realize that oh it is actually okay to um uh, to do that also to probe a little bit more like if I find that if someone thinks that they should just be giving positive feedback, you can probe a little bit more, ask them why they like something and go a little bit deeper with the questions because you might find that they'll have a, like a blanket feedback uh, statement, oh, I really like this. And if you ask them, oh, why do you like that? What, why is that standing out for you? Then you might find as you go a little bit deeper that they become a little bit more open. With what yes, please connect with me. I'd love to chat afterwards. Me a message on LinkedIn. <laughs> Thanks, Vicky. <Thank you. laughs>